Base camp at Philmont Scout Ranch stays very busy, with crews arriving, hitting the trail, returning from the trail, and heading home each day. You have limited time and lots to do. Knowing your way around base camp in advance will help things go smoothly and get your trek off to a great start. Your Philmont trek may not officially start until you get off the bus and hit the trail, but your journey begins when you leave home. We met crews that drove to the ranch, crews that took a train to a nearby town, and crews that flew in. However you choose to get to Philmont, make sure your arrival and departure plans are entered in the Philmont Camping Gateway at least two weeks prior to your arrival. Trains and planes won't get you all the way to the ranch. Philmont's Council and Unit Planning Guide has a list of common travel options. For all options except the train to Rattan, you will have to arrange transportation from the airport or train station to and from Philmont. There are bus, limo, van, and minibus services that you can charter, or you can rent a van and drive yourself. On our 2017 trek, we flew into Denver and rented a van for the drive to Philmont. Renting a van allowed us flexibility to make a few stops along the way and meant we could drive to Cimarron before or after the trek. We chose the Mile High City because we live at about 550 feet above sea level in central North Carolina. Spending a little extra time working up to Philmont's altitude would help us adjust to the thinner air. We toured the M plus M firearms factory in Denver then headed south to Colorado Springs where we visited the United States Air Force Academy. Later we drove through a rainy Garden of the Gods, which reminds me, don't forget to start hydrating early. Air travel tends to dehydrate people. Being fully hydrated will help you acclimate to the altitude more quickly. The next day we headed south, stopping at Fort Carson to tour the U.S. Army's 4th Infantry Division Museum. That was our last sightseeing stop before arriving in Cimarron, New Mexico. We timed our arrival for a late lunch at the historic St. James Hotel. We did not stop at the old Gristmill Museum, one block west of the St. James. I remember being impressed with the museum when I visited in 1990 and regret not suggesting that we stop on our last trek. Then it was just a few minutes drive to get to the ranch. You will pass the Villa Fomonte and Fomont Training Center on the left just before you get to the entrance to Fomont Scout Ranch where you make a right turn into base camp. If your crew is delayed en route, please call the Philmont Logistics Manager at 575-376-2281. Philmont allows crews to arrive one day early or depart one day late as required by your travel schedules. Unless you enter an early arrival in the Philmont Camping Gateway, then plan to arrive at the ranch on your scheduled arrival day between 8 and 10 a.m. Your crew leader and lead crew advisor will check your crew in at the Welcome Center, pay any outstanding expedition balance or other charges, and present the current crew roster and completed medical records and health insurance cards for each crew member. Normally, the Welcome Center will direct you where to park, then you'll meet your Philmont Ranger. We arrived a day early, so we would have more time to adjust to altitude and not be rushed getting all of our pre-trek tasks completed in base camp. After parking the van and unloading our gear, we moved into our assigned tents in Tent City. Most crews fly into the area, so they have to ship their backpacking stoves to film on ahead of time. If you forgot or your stoves got lost in the mail, then you can buy new ones at the Tooth of Time Traders. We picked ours up at the mail room, but found that the new fuel bottles we had ordered had the wrong threads for our stove. So we had to buy new fuel bottles at the Tooth of Time Trader. Then we were free to explore base camp, pick up some last minute personal gear at T-Tot, the Tooth of Time Traders, get ice cream at the cantina, highly recommended, and have dinner in the dining hall. I even set up the video camera and shot the first half of our pre-trek gear reviews at the picnic tables by the iconic crew photo bench with the Tooth of Time in the background. All of the trailbound crews, crews that will hit the trail for their trek the next morning, went to the opening campfire. The homebound crews, crews that have finished their trek and will leave the ranch for their trip home the next morning, went to the other side of base camp for the closing campfire. We had a couple of long days getting to Philmont and we're happy to settle in for our first night in Tent City. The next morning, we had breakfast at the dining hall. 
Then I snuck off to the Crew Advisors Lounge to plug in my action camera batteries and USB battery pack. Apparently, I wasn't the only one who had this idea. Since we got there a day early, we had not met our ranger yet. So we headed to the welcome center. The timing is between 8 and 10 a.m. to meet your ranger. You're in private transportation, where that bus is going straight, you would turn left and come right up here. And the advisor and crew leader will get out and go into the welcome center. So where the woman in the green shirt is standing is where you would go in and you'll do the sign-in process. Then you'll go to these picnic tables up here. Of course, there's a men's room here. Other side is the facilities for women. Anytime while you're here at Philmont, if you need to throw something away. Oh, to see, this isn't good. The trash cans. Here, put your hand in and push a lever to unlock them. All right, this one was not locked. That's to keep the critters out. Don't leave them sit like that. You want them latched right here, okay? So, crew leader and uh, senior crew advisor will go in there. This is uh, one of the staff people. I believe she is where the rangers check in to see what crews they're getting. Your crew leader and your um, senior advisor. I believe that's they're, they're going to come up either to the office or RAWC and that's where they're going to be assigned a ranger. They'll point you to a table, you'll sit down as a crew with your ranger and that's when you meet them. That's when you get the introduction. And they start going over the different procedures and processes that you'll go through in the backcountry. I think our ranger met us here during that check-in process and actually took us to show us where we were in Tent City. You see all of the packs over here. These are the pack lines for people who are getting ready to go on the trail. So they got in the day before, they got all their check-in, all their equipment, the shakedown from the ranger. They're getting ready to hit the trail. The ranger's going to sit them down at a table like this and go over all the last minute details, look at maps, make sure everyone's got their stuff together. And then the buses over here, they'll get loaded on the buses and head out to the trail. This looks like people coming off the trail right here. They load and unload at the same spot. These are people departing to go home. Those, you see the pots and stuff. Those are people getting ready to go out on the trail. So there is so much activity. People going three different directions here all the time. Kind of hard to keep track of it, okay? Our ranger kept us busy the rest of the day. Make sure that your entire crew has a water bottle with them while in base camp and that they stay hydrated. We already had our tent assignments in Tent City and we're lucky that we did not have to move. If you arrive early, then you may have to move to a new location in Tent City for your second night. This is logistics on the right, the radio communication center on the left. The welcome center that we were just at a minute ago is back there. So if from the welcome center you come straight back and make a right, that puts you at logistics. And crew leaders, senior advisors have to do get some information about the conditions on the trail at the different camps they're going to. Trek specific stuff happens here at logistics. All right, uh, when we met a ranger, we came and sat at one of these tables and had kind of an introductory get to know each other, start covering things. There's the radio control room. Camping headquarters is here. The crew leader and lead advisor have to meet the registrar at camping headquarters to verify your crew has at least two persons current in wilderness first aid and CPR. Make sure you have the current certification paperwork ready to show them. The registrar issues the crew a large envelope to store valuables in while you're on the trail. From there, the crew leader and lead advisor go across the little courtyard to logistics services to review and finalize your trek program, food pickups, and bus transportation. The crew leader needs to ensure that they have an unmarked Philmont trail map and their crew leader guide. Logistics folk will review your trek itinerary day by day and you will mark your route and campsites on your map. Be ready to take notes on any changes like if a trail's closed or a water source is dry or contaminated. After logistics, your ranger will take you across base camp to medical recheck. To get there from logistics, head east. That is a right turn if you're in the courtyard by logistics and facing the dining hall. On the way to medical recheck, you will pass the museum on the right, the yurt 
and to the time traders on the left along with the branding station and commissary keep going past the staff cabins on the left and the infirmary on the right and medical recheck will be on the left before the road you need everyone's completed medical forms for medical recheck if all is in order then this should go quickly then your crew gets a quick medical briefing next your ranger will talk to you about the con project emergency info and Trail of Courage board. I believe all of those were at the infirmary pavilion. On the way back from medical recheck, we passed the laundromat. If anyone needs to wash any clothes before hitting the trail, they will need money. There are change machines in the laundromat to get quarters for the washers and dryers and vending machines with laundry detergent. I recommend you don't use scented detergent or dryer sheets before hitting the trail to keep the people smells to a minimum. The next stop is outfitting services, which is on the back side of the building with the mail room. The crew leader must present their copy of your itinerary in order to get trail food, hot tents, dining fly, utensils, any of the other crew gear that you check out from Philmont. This is also where you buy white gas if needed for your stoves and pick up any rental pack. While you're there, check your mail one last time before you hit the trail. Next, you will head back to Tent City for your ranger to lead one last gear shakedown. If you haven't checked out Gear Report's best budget gear for Philmont article, then click the link in the video description to go check that out. We also have articles on how to prepare your crew for a Philmont trek and a better cooking method to use in the backcountry. For your shakedown, everyone will pull out your beds and use them to display your trail gear. As the ranger calls out items on the packing list, each person holds up the item or indicates that they don't have the item. If any items are missing, then make a list. After the shakedown, you'll have to run to T-Tot to buy them. When the shakedown is completed, all of your excess gear will be stored in your crew locker or in your vehicle. Make sure you stow anything that you don't want to carry on the trail as you have to carry it with you once you leave base camp. Your ranger is not allowed to carry any, quote, extra gear back to base camp for you. If you realize too late that you didn't actually need something, you're also not allowed to drop it at any staffed camps along the way. You take it out of base camp, you gotta carry it the whole time. There's also an option if you have time to get a tour of camp headquarters from your ranger. We actually didn't take the time to do that. If you want to schedule a tour of the Villa Filmonte before you leave the ranch, you can do so at the museum across from Teton. We had lunch and dinner in the dining hall. Pay attention to the meal schedule. It's important. Trailbound and homebound crews eat at different times. So if you're trailbound, you're getting ready to go out on your trek. Breakfast is 6.30 a.m. Lunch is 11.30. Dinner is 4.45. If you're homebound, you've just come off the trail. Breakfast is 7 a.m. Lunch is 12.15 and dinner is 5.45. After dinner, everyone with assigned positions has meetings. Adult advisors go to the infirmary shelter for the advisors meeting. After the meeting, they wheel out a cart of instant coffee, tea, cocoa mix, sugar, creamer, etc. If you want any of these on the trail, then grab enough to last your whole trek. This is your opportunity. Crew leaders, chaplains, aides, and guias also have meetings to talk about their responsibilities in the backcountry. Your ranger will tell you all the meeting locations and times. At 7 p.m., there are religious services and T-Tot is closed during that time, so plan ahead if you need to pick up some last minute gear. After dinner is your last chance to knock out tasks around camp. It's a great time to write or call home and pick up postcards and stamps, which by the way, you can drop off those postcards at any of the backcountry trading posts to go in outgoing mail. As the sun sets, you will head across the street to the opening program. It's a pretty cool story of the history of the area in and around Philmont. I was surprised how chilly it got as the sun went down, so make sure you dress warmly. I also recommend you squeeze in time for one last hot shower if you can. Crew advisors, don't forget any phones or battery packs that you plugged in to charge in the crew advisors lounge. I topped off my battery pack overnight and almost forgot to pick it up before hitting the trail the next morning. Philmont tells you there's no phone service on the trail, but that's completely untrue. There are places with no service, but there are plenty of places with mobile phone service as well. I recommend that every crew has at least one advisor, not youth, advisor with a phone for emergencies, but please resist the urge to talk on the phone while hiking. It ruins the vibe of being in the back country. I know everyone is excited to hit the trail the next morning, but try to get a good night's sleep. You'll need the energy when you hit the trail the next day. 
things happen fast on the morning that you are trail bound. You'll eat breakfast in the dining hall before checking out a tent city, stowing any last minute items in your crew locker or vehicle, and reporting to the welcome center ahead of your scheduled departure time. You'll make a pack line on a post beside the bus pickup area, then wait for your crew to be called. There is a water bottle filling station at the Welcome Center. Make sure you fill your water bottles before you get on the bus. You cannot be late for your departure time. Your crew leader should designate a few strong crew members to help get all the packs stowed in the back of the bus. Once everyone is on board, your adventure truly begins. The bus will take you to an offload point where your ranger will introduce you to some of the methods used on the trail at Philmont then you will hike to your first campsite. I hope this video has been useful in helping you prepare for your Philmont trek. Please post any questions in the comments below.